my channel um, it's already been a really productive morning it's a Tuesday and I got bread out of the oven already and actually it's 10 o'clock the kids are downstairs in the basement playing Miller just went down for his nap and that means it's time for me to get moving because I have a project day today it's gonna just be a sewing day in my life I'll show you like all what we're eating and doing and how it really goes down when a mom of three oh. <laughs> You wanna go outside? Okay, sure. I thought they were downstairs, maybe they were. Anyway, you're gonna see how it actually works to have three kids and try to get something done at the same time. So here is my office. Um, I have a little seating area over here for something coming up on my channel in a little bit, but over here is like where I normally work and I want to sew. So I've pulled out my sewing machine. I'm gonna have to set this all up later, but this is the fabrics here. This coloring is gonna be bad with that light bulb on. So you probably recognize this fabric if you watch my what I spent in a week video. I did buy it a, about a month ago. So I wanna make two dresses. We'll see if they both happen today or not. But these are the two fabrics. This one's a rib knit and this one is a very soft brushed poly. And I dropped off three fourths of a yard of fabric for, to an Amish lady in the area. And she sewed me two little dresses for Ivani already, so now I need to get mine sewn. Yeah, they're just so adorable. She loves when you match, so this is going to be a big hit. Um, this one's just straight, and I want to add some little tortoise shell buttons up at the neck. And then this one has gathers at the waist, and it's just, yeah, it's so cute. So I used to sew a lot, actually, but I haven't really sewn all winter, and so I'm excited to get back to it again. The idea and inspiration, I'll put it here on the screen. You can see I found this dress at the Main Street Exchange, and I fit it on, and I loved it, but I didn't really want the long sleeves, and it was just a hair too short for me. And so I decided that, you know what, it's not my dress. It was also like a... Uh, really thin crepey fabric it wasn't very stretchy or anything so I was like eh, I don't know how serviceable it's gonna be how much will I actually wear it is it gonna shrink in the I didn't know anyway I love the print though so that is gonna be my inspiration for these two dresses and I've been sewing since I was 13 but I know many of you who are into sewing are maybe beginners so I do have patterns that I could use um, not a pattern for this dress specifically but I could alter one but I decided I'm gonna show you guys how um, you can so a dress based off of a t-shirt that you like. So that's what we're gonna do today. Hopefully it works out and hopefully we can learn together. I'm gonna put it on right now and show you what I like about it. Okay, so here is the shirt. There's a reason I like it because I did design this shirt. It was part of my spring clothing collection. And so there's a lot of details about it that I can tell you that I love, but basically I'm just looking at the shape. This is a t-shirt that fits me really well. Um, the sleeves are a little snug, so I might add a little room here under the armholes. Um, it drapes really nicely and just kind of flares out at the hips a little. It's designed to, you know, tuck it in in the front if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, this is gonna be my pattern for my dress. I'm just gonna make it longer, and then I'm gonna add a strip of fabric on the bottom, ruffle it on, and hopefully we get something that is just easy to wear very like slip on and go. I won't be able to nurse in it, which is a problem. 
but I have worked, I have so many ways of working around that. Um, one, if I'm home, it doesn't matter. Two, if I'm away, I'll just bring a bottle or I just won't wear that outfit that day. But I'm thinking specifically these dresses are gonna be so comfy um, just to throw on and go. Um, there's something about a dress, guys. If you're not a dress girl, <laughs> you're missing out because you don't have to worry about anything. Um, matching is just like a one and done outfit. So I am a dress girl by all means, but it's kind of hard to find them sometimes. So I like to sew my own. So anyway, I'm going to lay this out here, which is always the most time consuming, tedious part that I never really enjoy because stretchy fabric is so nice to wear, but it's kind of hard to handle because it stretches and bounces around and everything. So that's what we're going to work on now. The kids are back outside, so I probably have to run in and out a bunch and check on them. But I'm going to see how much I can get done in the next hour before the baby wakes up. Let's go. Oh my goodness, what did you bring me? <laughs> They're beautiful. Show everybody your new Crocs. Okay, let's put them in the jar. By the way, if you see all kinds of flies in this video, it's because the children. They keep coming in and out, and so, so do the flies. Um, so yeah, we'll just try to ignore that in this video. And I have taken measures, one, to tell the children to keep the door shut, and also I have a fly trap or two sitting around, so hopefully that will take care of them. Okay, go take it to the bathroom and fill it up. I like them, they're so pretty. They are. I picked them. Okay, you gotta have a nice sharp sewing scissors. This is my Ginger one. My mom always used these, so. <laughs> Anybody remember if your mom was a sewer, what would happen if you accidentally used sewing scissors for something besides sewing? <laughs> okay, so first of all, I am cutting out, I'm just tracing along the back neck. Um, so this is gonna be a higher neckline a little bit than in the front. Um, and then I'm just going to follow along a little bit beyond the edge of the shirt just because there will be some seam allowance room and stuff. I'm gonna make the sleeves a little bit longer than the shirt so that I can, um, you know, turn them over to hem them. And I'm just gonna cut down through here and I'm going to kind of notch out the sleeves but not a lot because I want a little bit more room than the shirt was giving me. So that's pretty much how I'm gonna do that. <laughs> well, I hope it works out. And now I have to cut the front, which will be the exact same thing, but I'm gonna make the neck a little bit. I'm gonna do a rounded neck again, even though the t-shirt had a V. Um, I'm just gonna make it a little bit lower and a little bit wider, not much. Okay, and I am cutting the ruffle just now. And a ruffle is, you don't have to do any curved lines. It's just a long strip of fabric that's a lot longer than whatever you're sewing it to. And um, you just gather it on. So I'm gonna, I decided to make my ruffle about 10 inches. I decided that's probably what it looks. a drink and I take my vitamins for the day and I take ritual vitamins and ritual sponsoring this portion of today's video I've worked with them for years because I've 
taken them for years and I've really um, grown to appreciate all the hard work and the research they put into every single nutrient and all of their vitamins are super transparent. I think that's what I like most about them. Like just the confidence it gives me just knowing that they have done all the work to source really quality nutrients. You can go online and figure out where they've sourced all the things, you know, like the, the omega threes and even the vitamin C, everything. You can see exactly where it's coming from and there's no secrets. And that just gives me more confidence in knowing that I am doing what I can to take care of my body, especially with postpartum. And I find this very fascinating. First of all, Ritual has vitamins for men, for women, for teens, for 50 plus prenatal, postnatal. Over the years, I've taken three of their vitamins. And did you know that the women's vitamin has nine key nutrients? And then if you are taking prenatals, there's 12 key nutrients, but if you are postnatal, there's 15 nutrients that you're getting in your capsules here, which makes sense because I mean, you're literally sustaining a life <laughs> out of your own body. So you want them to, um, yeah, do the job, right? This all helps you if you are choosing to breastfeed, even if you're not, um, your body's still been through a lot after you had a baby. After coming through childbearing and all that, you definitely need to be conscious of what you're putting in your body to support your overall health. They're also very transparent about their environmental impact. They use 100% recycled materials and their mailers are made from recycled newsprint and plant fibers. And they even use plant-based ink. Ritual is vegan-friendly, non-GMO, gluten-free, allergen-free, and contains no added sugar. And they don't just have vitamins anymore. They also have an essential protein range you could check out as well. They are a subscription service right to your door. And right now, they've given me a code that you can use to get 20% off your first month when you sign up for Ritual. Again, that's going to get you 20% off of your first month. Regardless, I think it's very important that us as moms take good care of our body, get our sleep. And along with that, I think it just puts a spring in my step and just makes me more excited about my day when I do have like a fun project here and there that I get to work on, whether that's like a fun new recipe or like today we're sewing. I feel like that's part of health and wellness too. We're not just diaper changing, dishwashing, laundry folding mamas, right? We have interests and hobbies too. So if you can find a way to carve that out, um, if it's gardening for you, this is a great time to do that or whatever it is, just for, try to find a way to be a little bit creative. But maybe if you've been putting that kind of thing on the back burner, there is times for that. Like I wasn't getting projects done right after the baby was born, but it's fun to get back at it again. Um, I have some interior design things I wanna work on too. But, but anyway, it is 11, 21, the baby's still sleeping. I should probably get him him up and feed him and then we will continue into the sewing portion of this dress and get lunch. I have a really yummy lunch um, I want to show you guys today. We'll see if it turns out. I'm going to copy off of a coffee shop recipe that I had a little bit ago so we will see. Happy, happy, happy baby. Happy, happy, happy baby. <laughs> if you're wondering why my little baby never has any <laughs> socks on. It's because he rubs his feet together when he's happy. He rubs his feet together when he's mad. It just doesn't work. So we just give up and you're barefoot pretty much all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Do you see the camera? one bobbin to last the whole project. Can you watch me sew? Um, yes, go for, can you go carry my box over here for me, my clear box? You look like a princess carrying her basket. Thank you. Now, go wash your shirt off with a blue towel. Aha! I already have a black bobbin and black thread. Here we go.
put this dress on just to kind of get an idea of it. And I can already tell it's gonna be cute. It's obviously pretty short, but that's because I don't have the ruffle on yet. You can never add to a hemline, uh, to a neckline or a hemline or anything, but you can always take away. So I'm gonna make it a little lower, and then we'll also have the t-shirt ribbing for the hem, so that'll make it go up higher again. So it's definitely a little <laughs> choky. Um, also, the sleeves, I think they look cute, but I'm not gonna hem them, just because they're pretty tight, and I need to preserve the stretch on the fabric. If I put a, if I hem them, then the stretchy, my thread is not as stretchy, and so I won't even be able to wear the dress because I need that stretch in the arms. The arms are a nice length for summer, I feel, um, but I think the second dress I make, I'm going to make the sleeves a little, maybe like an inch looser, um, and maybe an inch longer as well. But yeah, let's keep going. Actually, I'm going to um, take this off, and I'm gonna start making lunch, because it's already after 12, I'm getting hungry. I still don't have the first dress done yet, but we're getting there, and I'm starting to see the vision, which is giving me a little bit more um, excitement, I guess you could say. So Josh and I recently went on a date to a coffee shop and I ordered, it was an amazing panini toasted cheese type of sandwich. Um, and on it they had brie cheese and bacon and then apricot preserve. And it was on rosemary bread, which I've made rosemary bread many times before. So I made that this morning. And now I'm assembling the sandwiches as best I can the way they had them, except I'm not really a huge fan of brie cheese. And at the coffee shop I told them I would like it half mozzarella, half brie, and that was so good. And I'm pretty sure the kids won't like brie, so I didn't even bother buying any brie. Sorry if you hear that noise, the kids are playing. But they're happy, so that's what counts. Anyway, so just that sweet and salty and the cheese, it was amazing. Um, I couldn't get it out of my head. So, since that's what I've been craving, um, this is the type of food that I love, Josh does not, so this is what we eat for lunch. There's so many different things the kids love that I love because I make it for them at lunchtime, and you know, this is just not Josh's thing. So I'm putting a nice thick layer of apricot preserve, which I did get at Walmart of all places, but um, I'm sure you can get it all kinds of, I probably should've got the Amish version at an Amish bulk food store, but this is what we got. So I'm just going to put my rosemary bread on top there. I'm just making two sandwiches because the kids will share one and I will probably not eat quite a whole one. I don't know, we'll see. They're really good, so who knows. But look at that. Oh, that looks so good. You got the bacon in there and then the mozzarella and I did cheddar and provolone and then I will serve some greens on the side so that we have something healthy and also chips because that just always makes it feel like a coffee shop. And I did include that recipe for the rosemary bread in a past video so I will try to link that down below. And then I'm also gonna serve some spinach. My kids will eat anything. As long as I let them dip it in Italian dressing, they will eat just about anything. And that's gonna be lunch for the day. Wow, look at that. Okay, and then they served it with a balsamic glaze. I'm sorry, this is a project day. I don't have time to make all kinds of culinary masterpieces. So I'm just gonna take the basic balsamic vinegar and I'm gonna kind of put it in a little dish, dip my sandwich in it as I'm eating it, and that'll be good enough for today. Actually, let me drizzle a little bit on my lettuce. I don't know if the kids will like this. Like I said, they just love Italian dressing, so we'll do it that way. Yeah. And using a cute dish is something that YouTube has taught me, but seriously guys, why not in real life too? Use the pretty dishes, don't save them. Okay, so lunch was very, very delicious. I will put here on the screen all the ingredients that I put in that one. Um, the one the one thing I thought a while about is the rosemary herb bread is so delicious. I make it in the Dutch oven so it gets this awesome crust on it. But then when you toast it, it also makes it even harder. It's fluffy in the middle, but then it's crusty, really crusty on the outside, which I like a lot. I like when you have to like chew it. Um, but for the kids in a sandwich, it's hard for them to get it around their like their mouths around it and then not cut themselves. They didn't, you guys didn't cut yourselves, right? It just kind of hurts. Um, so I think like a softer bread maybe for the kids would work better, but oh, I love it. I love, I love that crust. So take that with a grain of salt. You can decide what you want to do. And Miller is finally eating a little bit. He's had, I'm not gonna give him food now, at supper time I will. Um, he's had baby oatmeal and bananas and applesauce so far, right? Did Grand Jan feed you applesauce? Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm more spinach. More spinach. Honestly, my word, I'm just pushing through though. I know when I go to edit this video though, I don't know if you guys will think about it. Okay, the kids are down for their naps. I thought by this point I would have a dress totally done and then the other one cut out. Clearly that did not happen. I still have um, a few seams to do on this one yet and then I still have to, I haven't even started on the other one yet, cutting it out or anything. So I also wanna make cheesy potato soup for supper because I have ham in the fridge that needs to get used up. Yeah, I'm running behind, but I did wanna show you, you guys saw some clips there of me reading them stories before nap time. I found a steal of a deal when I was garage sailing on Saturday. This series of books, I don't know if you're familiar with them, it's just all about all different types of little like bad behaviors or sins that kids can do, being mean, complaining, showing off. And there's 29 of them in the series. Uh, and I have all of them. I got some for our church library at Community Aid, and then I went garage sale on Saturday, and I found the whole entire set, brand new, never even cracked open. Like, listen to this. <laughs> that means they've never been even opened yet. So they're in such good condition, perfect condition. Anyway, they're so fun. They just have like little cartoon stories on every page. And my kids love them because they don't really have to know how to read to enjoy the books. They can just like look at them and understand the pictures. As long as I tell them the title ahead of time, like, well, gossiping, they don't know what that word is, but I'll have to explain it to them. But if I told them, oh, the book is about being mean, they could know that on every page, oh yeah, they can see what's happening and they can kind of make up the story in their head a little bit. I still like to read them to them as well, of course, but like showing off, you know, it's so cute. They're all by Joy Berry. And I actually grew up with them as a kid. So I'm pretty sure they are very old school. Um, but yeah, I just thought I would point that out. You could probably check on thrift books, see if you can find some there. Um, sorry, I'm so nasally. I feel like you can't understand me. Thrift books is what I was saying, or Amazon, I'm sure I would have them. So actually last night, um, one of my children who will remain unnamed was struggling with destructiveness. And there's a book about being destructive. So we got that book out and we read about it and talked about how we don't um, treat our toys badly or throw things and blah, 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 all that. And so, yeah, I am sure we will whip, the, whip these books out a lot. My children will probably get sick of them. They're a latest favorite, so I thought I would just Pass that along.
I don't think you can tell, but it is raining. Oh, it sounds so pretty. Also, while I have you out here, this whole back is like wildflowers and whatever the lady who lived here before had, like bulbs and different stuff. And then here's this like little patio area and this like rickety little, whatever you call it. Here, let's zoom out. And then the awful exterior back here. We are so excited. We are planning and dreaming about doing a really nice patio. We're gonna have to move Put like a little retaining wall back here on the hill. You can't really tell, but that's kind of a hill. And then have like a propane uh, insert and a fireplace, a grill, and maybe if we're lucky, a hot tub. We're really thinking about it. We're really considering it. I don't know. But of course, everything costs money. So I think we're in the contractors, the hardscapers schedule for next spring or this coming spring. So a year from now. So Ah, anyway, I'm gonna have fun dreaming about that over the next year um, because there's definitely a lot of pain points back here that I wanna fix. <laughs> or maybe not pain, just like minor inconveniences, let's be honest. <laughs> Okay, here is the dress. Immediately, it's adorable. I love it, it's so comfy. The neck is very high, very choky kind. I mean, it's not choking, it's comfortable or whatever. It just doesn't look maybe the most comfortable. The second one I cut out, I'm definitely gonna do a wider neck. I just, oh, with these um, neck bands, I'm always afraid that they're gonna get too like too wide. And like, I hate when you bend over and you have to worry about, you know, what people can see. So I like to do, like a little bit of a higher neck, but this is like, there's no collarbone at all there, so. And it got a little bit longer than I was expecting, but I kind of like it like that. Like, I don't have to worry at all about it, you know, coming up really high or anything. It's just a couple inches below my knee for sure. Yeah, I don't know, I really like it. I feel tall and kind of sophisticated in it, but it's gonna be probably an everyday dress. You know, I mean, I'll wear it out and about to like play dates and stuff, but the whole idea of sewing this was so that I can just wear it for any old anything, like doing laundry, whatever. So very cute and definitely it's what I was going for when it comes to the inspo picture. Okay, so Vani's up from her nap. She's helping me make potato soup and I have all the ingredients right here. A little heavy on the potatoes, <laughs> but it's okay. Um, and I have my website pulled up on my phone here. This is the old phone that we use like as an MP3 player for the kids um, when they wanna listen to an audiobook. So here's the recipe. I will link it below, but look at the, the phone case on this phone. Does it look familiar? Are you kidding? It looks right like the fabric that I've been cutting all day today, so. That cracked me up a little bit. Clearly, I have a thing for pink floral on black. <laughs> okay, so there's all the ingredients. We are just going, Vani actually helped me dice up the potatoes with her little kid's knife. And I made my own chicken stock. Can we have a round of applause for Megan? Um, that's the fat that, um, I actually threw these jars in the freezer and I pulled it out and it thawed out all day and that's the chunks you see is actually fat that floated to the top. I guess I'll pick that off and throw it out. I'm guessing Mama. somebody's gonna say, oh, you should have kept it in the soup, but Mama, I'm gonna take it out. Slippy. It's slippy? Oh yeah, that's good. I'm gonna get it all around in the bottom of the pan, and then we're gonna put the carrots and the parsley and stuff in there. I'm just gonna... Oh man, it smells so good. That does it. What do you think that is? The, the parsley and the... Garlic, mm, I love garlic. There's actually no garlic in here. Should we add some? Yeah. That would be good. Let me get the garlic salt out for you. You can add a little bit.
<laughs> Miller. Okay, I've been sewing all evening. I actually got Josh to do the dishes uh, after we were done eating. And I've been sewing, not feeling like it, but I feel like I just gotta get my projects done like so I can put everything away again. Um, but look, I just looked up out the window and look what I see. Of course, it looks way cooler in real life, but wow, so beautiful. So I think I will pick up this vlog tomorrow and show you the finished product. But as you can see, I did finish or uh, fix the neck on this dress. It looks so much better. There you can see it again. Much more like ladylike feminine um, neckline. And yes, I need to show you the whole house. It's just like, oh my goodness, guys. This is, I'm going to go to bed with it like this. And then I'm going to get up in the morning with lots more energy. And I'm going to clean it up. The toy room, do you guys remember how it looked this morning? Mm, I've seen worse. Okay, it's not near as bad as I was expecting it to get, but the basement, the kids were in the basement a lot of the day and they were also outside, which is super nice. My mom was always a winter sewer, but I'm starting to think spring and summer might be where it's at because the kids can be outside and they have things to do, I don't know. But yeah, I look like a wreck. I feel like my allergies are just like giving me a dull headache. <sighs> but anyway, I did get a lot done. My second dress is about 50% of the way I'm going to feed Miller and then come back down here and finish it up, I think. And then start all over again in the morning by getting the house cleaned up. And my sister-in-law just got a trampoline for her kids. They live really close, so I think we're going to go over there maybe tomorrow if, I, if she says yes. And let the kids jump on the trampoline. So, we'll see. I want to show you guys these finished dresses then too. Okay, Ivani and I want to show you our dresses. But before we do that, this has to all get cleaned up. So, here's the before. And there we have it. <laughs> if only it worked that way, right? Um, but yeah, I got everything converted back to my office again. I put the iron away, the sewing machine, all that, and we're back to business as usual. That's actually why I like to do a couple projects at a time. That way I can have everything out, you know, and make it worthwhile. But anyway, me and Yvonne are gonna do a little fashion show for you in our dresses, and I'll let you know what I think, I'll let you know a few more details about sources and things like that. And then at the end, I want to talk about <laughs> how I used to go to a church where we only could sew our clothes. So we'll talk about that a little bit just at the end here. So let's see. Are you ready? Ready to do a little fashion show? Okay, yeah. here we go. Okay, and here's the first one. Bonnie, what do you think? Good. You want to twirl? Mm -hmm. So this one, I would say, turned out really good, except the sleeves are a little tight, but thank goodness for the stretchy fabric. It's very forgiving. Um, it skims really nicely. I love the hem. It's so cute. Um, and Bonnie, look at your dress. We're gonna show them the buttons. I will link these buttons down below in case there's any other seamstresses out there. I got them for like a pack of 100 tortoiseshell buttons or like coconut shell, I think, on Amazon, and they were really, really inexpensive. So I will put that link down below. Um, but yeah, this is just like a comfy rib knit. Bonnie, is it comfortable? Do you feel very comfortable? Yeah, I'm, it's like comfy button on the other side. Oh, it's like a different color. Yeah, you could use the button. The buttons are good, good point. These buttons have a dark side and a light side, so you can kind of do what you want with them. And then she has the same neckband at the neck like I do. Um, and turn it around, let's show them your bows. I got a giant pack of these off of Amazon and she's having fun wearing them. <laughs> the reason I got the Amish girl to sew them for me is because I just was not having time and I like, you can find lots of cute girls dresses out there but they're not very long and I want a little bit longer ones. Plus when she goes to school, I think there's a dress code about how long your dresses have to be. But you can see here how the dress is cut and I think it looks really cute when it stands down like that. Um, but yeah, now we can match Bonnie. Okay, do you want to show me the other one? Okay, while she's changing, I just thought I'd show you how this would look with a cardigan on. Very cute. And like I said, when you're wearing a dress, you always are like the best dressed one in the room, in my opinion. It's just, plus it's really easy. You just throw it on. Um, this is something I could do housework in and then, you know, hit the road and go do some errand running or meet up with a friend or something. Here we are in our second dresses. Is this one comfortable too? Yeah. Very cute. It's like really fuzzy. Yeah, this is a double brush poly, so very, very um, soft. You can't get hardly any softer than this. But again, my dress is made the same way. The neckline got a little bit um, wider because it's like a more flimsy fabric, if that makes sense. Okay, Bonnie, which one's your favorite? This one or the other one? Um, that one. The one with the buttons? Yeah, she likes the buttons. This one has gathers at the waist. Um, if I get her to sew for me again, which I think I will, I'm going to have her put the waist up a little higher like this. The waist got a little bit low, but that was my fault. I think I gave her some incorrect measurements. But yeah, fits very nicely, and we match again. Bonnie, do you think we'll ever actually wear dresses at the same time? Mm -hmm. You think we will? Mm -hmm. You want to match? 
<laughs> She's still at the age where mom is cool, so we'll take it when we can. With this fabric, um, I feel like it looks really good with denim. That was kind of the idea, and it has blue in it. Um, yeah, see what I'm going for there? It's very, I don't know, I just love it. It's very cute. What else can you say about it? It's a very simple, easy dress. I made it with, you know, my t-shirt. So it went started as a t-shirt and turned into a dress. This sleeve here has some threads I need to trim off. <laughs> or another thing you can do if you have graphic tees and dresses and wanna go for a totally different look. I like doing this especially with like if you have crop tops or something, cause a dress will totally cover up your stomach. You don't have to worry about it at all. It's very modest. Um, instead of trying to wear this with a skirt, you know, you throw on a dress, knot it up. I just did a little bow knot there like so and you have a whole different look completely i don't know if this tee really goes with this dress um but yeah you see what the idea is you can turn any dress into a skirt and shirt type of look as well so very easy very fun very very comfortable this is a great maternity style as well you know and if it was a cooler night or if i want to edge up the dress a little bit i can throw on my denim jacket too yeah there's all kinds of ways you can style dresses like this i will say um if i had made this in a solid print it would have been more versatile, but whenever I make a solid double brush poly, I feel like I see like underwear lines and stuff, and I just don't like that. And they also show dirt way quicker. So I'm quicker to gravitate towards small prints when I'm doing anything that's like this creepy double brush poly fabric because yeah, it's just a little more forgiving. Both of these pieces I got at Milk Fabrics in Loyola, PA, if you're ever in the area. And, but yeah, as I was saying, um, I grew up in a church where you had to sew all of your dresses because the dress code standard at our church was um, you had to wear a cape on your dress. It stems way back in the day from like real capes that people used to wear. Like it's just an extra layer of modesty, I guess you could say, kind of like an apron would be. I think the Amish do apron. It's really just another layer on the top of a bodice of a dress to add some extra like coverage, I guess. I mean, I can totally see the point of it, but anyway, that was the rule. You had to have those on your dress. So how are you gonna have that on your dress unless you sewed it yourself? So that was the whole idea. We sewed our own dresses. And nowadays I feel like there's so many modest boutiques out there that sell dresses with like good length sleeves and like a nice, you know, they cover your knee and everything. And um, I don't know if it was like that back when I was a teenager or not. Um, I didn't know about it because, you know, that wasn't an option for me because we always had to sew our stuff. And I do feel like there is something to dresses being more in style now than they maybe were back in the day. I remember um, when I went to high school, denim long skirts to the floor were like super on trend, which I could never wear them because I had to sew dresses. We had to wear dresses, no skirts. Um, but yeah, it just goes to show you how different churches agree on different roles. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that if you agree to be a part of a church and that's the standards they set. It's great to have like accountability. Um, the church I go to, you have a little bit more variety. Like people wear all kinds of like dresses, skirts, um, very feminine dressing of course and everything, but it's not so like black and white as what the rules are, um, which also creates a whole nother conversation and you have to decide what is okay for you and for your family and for your little girls. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up so I know that you like sewing stuff woven into a day in the life type of vlog and also make those toasted cheese sandwiches and let me know what you think of them wow they were so good also check out ritual for 20 percent off your first month and i will see you all in my next video bye everyone